Hi, I'm Dave with Remodel Media. In the previous video, we showed you how to pick the right kitchen sink. We showed you uh, some different materials and different configurations that you can choose. Uh, in this video, I'd like to continue that conversation and show you how to complete a kitchen suite of product. So, I've been doing this about 13 years, helping people put together uh, kitchens, bathrooms, outdoor kitchens. And, well, about uh, 10 years ago, I was working with a guy named Brian, and uh, he's from Boston. And one of the first questions he asked me with regard to kitchens was, he said, Hey, Baker, what's with all this egg yet crap? And uh, so, uh, I'm here to answer that question for you today. An air gap gets installed on the counter next to your faucet. It'll look like this. Now, I recommend getting one that has the lip right here. The lip right here will cover this little white ring and keep it from being exposed because that always gets dirty. The purpose of an air gap is to prevent the dirty water from getting back into the dishwasher. Now it's not required uh, for installation in some states. In California, uh, there needs to be some sort of anti-siphon device attached to the dishwasher. Uh, so your easiest way to do that is to put in an air gap and you can get an air gap in a matching finish to whatever faucet you end up selecting. In some states, what they do underneath the counter is they just loop the drain hose from the dishwasher and run it right into the garbage disposal. Uh, in this state, what we do is we actually, uh, the, it will drain, the dishwasher will drain into the air gap and the other end will be attached to your garbage disposal and the garbage disposal will then drain into the drain. If for some reason there is ever a clog in the line, rather than having the dirty water get go back into the dishwasher, the dirty water will actually spit out into your sink. The problem with looping the hose is if there's a clog in the line, it backs up into the dishwasher and nobody wants to wash their dishes in dirty water, it's just not good. So that's one accessory that you can choose to have on your kitchen sink. Another very popular selection is a soap dispenser. And again, we can get a matching soap dispenser to match any style kitchen faucet. The thing to remember about soap dispensers, 99% of them are gonna be fillable from the top. When I first got a soap dispenser, I uh, came home and found my 12 year old daughter underneath the sink changing out the soap. I said, what are you doing, sweetie? She said, oh, we were just out of soap. Uh, so I figured I'd change it. I said, thank you for being very helpful. And then I walked over to the soap dispenser and I lifted it. And I showed her where to put it. She said, oh, that makes sense. Yes, it does. So if anybody tells you they don't want a soap dispenser because they don't want to crawl into the sink, well, they don't have to. You just lift the, you lift the head and you fill from there. Now I always recommend putting a couple of drops of water in with the dish soap uh, just to make it a little bit thinner because at the other end of this is just a thin plastic tube. So a few drops of water will sometimes help uh, keep this thing going for, you know, uh, a good long period of time. Another accessory that you can do to round out your kitchen is a water filter faucet. Now, there's a couple different types of filtration that you can choose, and we can spend a good long while talking about it, and we'll probably do that in a follow-up video. But to keep it short, you have your basic cold water filtration. You'll walk up and you'll uh, uh, turn the faucet on and have it produce cold water. 
you could have a cold and a hot, or you could have hot only, where in one faucet you'll have both cold and hot, you can turn that on, and you could produce hot water for things such as tea or rinsing out a cup uh, or whatever you want hot water for. Uh, keep in mind every accessory that you do in that regard is going to take up space under the counter. So in a follow-up video we're going to do some under counter accessories uh, such as water filtration, reverse osmosis, they're not the same thing, and under counter hot water tanks. Another type of faucet you can have in your kitchen is a pot filler and just about every kitchen faucet can have a matching pot filler. Now what a pot filler is, is this guy lives right next to your stove and you can install, you can get one that installs in the countertop or you can get one that comes out of the wall and you can turn this, fill that pot that's on the stove, close it, put it away when you're done. And again, most of your major brands are going to have that as an option available. So it's something to consider, something that definitely needs to be planned for. One of the key tips that I have found with pot fillers, especially if you're going to do a wall mount, is consider whether or not there's going to be cabinets above because most of them are step shaped like this. So even if the hole right here is beneath the cabinet, you want to make sure that the hole right here beneath the cabinet in the wall is far enough down from your cabinetry that you don't have an interference issue with a wall mounted pot filler coming out of the wall and hitting your cabinet. Another pop popular accessory for your kitchen is going to be a garbage disposal button. Now a garbage disposal button is a fairly simple device. It works with anybody's garbage disposal and it can work in anybody's kitchen. Uh, the way it works is uh, it replaces that light switch that you might have on the backsplash or under the counter. The very first air switch that ever came out uh, was a very intelligent enterprising plumber who had a very particular customer. That customer did not want anything on their backsplash and they wanted a simple way to turn on their garbage disposal. He gave it a good think and he realized he could reuse that switch that was in his outdoor jacuzzi. So if you've ever sat in an outdoor jacuzzi and you've pushed that little button in to make the bubbles come out, it's the exact same device. What it does is you push the button, the air switch pushes air through a tube the tube leads to an electrical box that flips a switch inside the box, which is plugged into the wall. The uh, garbage disposal is then plugged into the box. So every time you push this button, you're flipping that switch inside the box. So it sounds pretty complicated, but it's actually really simple. It's all plug and play. There's no wiring or in the wall that needs to happen. As long as you have an electrical outlet underneath your sink, which you probably do if you have a garbage disposal, you're good to go. The last piece to pick, or the final piece that we'll discuss today, is the faucet. Now, I could spend the next several hours talking to you about all the faucets that are out there in the world. There are a lot of them. But I'm going to break it down into just a couple of main categories to consider when you're putting together your project. The first category is a simple fixed spout, probably with a side spray. Now we've all seen a faucet at some point in our lives look something like this. This is a very typical, very basic faucet. Nothing wrong with it. It's just very plain. Uh, the next step up from there would be to go with a high arc faucet that has a side spray. And again, we can get these in different finishes and different styles, but the important thing to remember here is you do have options even if you want to do a side spray. Now, many folks you'll find like to do faucets that pull out. Now, when you start to consider pull-out faucets, there's two types of hoses I want you to pay attention to. There's a traditional faucet hose that has these links. Now, these links right here will eventually separate 
and you'll have to replace the hose. Now, it's not a problem, it's just one more step of maintenance to think about. Other faucets will actually have a braided line. Now, I happen to prefer it for two reasons. One, give this a listen here. It's a lot smoother going in and out than something like this. And because there's less friction, uh, the hose lasts a lot longer too. Now, the next thing to consider, whether you do pull outs or pull downs, is the, the only difference really here is the reach of the faucet if you want a low pull out. Now, some of the reasons people pick a low pull out is because they maybe have a window right here or a pass through counter that they want to keep the faucet profile low. Uh, some folks don't have that as a problem or a concern, so they want to go with a higher reach faucet so they can fit that big pot under there. Both are okay, it just depends on what you want to see. Uh, another type of faucet that's out there is a faucet called a pre-rinse faucet. Now, this is patterned after the larger uh, commercial faucets that you would see in a uh, commercial restaurant. Now, the difference between this and a commercial faucet, however, this is only about 18 to 20 inches high. A commercial faucet is going to be closer to about 33 to 34 inches high. Uh, so that nice tall faucet is going to have lots of articulation and reach. When you shrink it down to about 20 inches or 18 inches, you don't get a lot of reach out of something like this. So it's not my favorite faucet. But some people still like the look, and if that's what they want, that's what they want. And that's not a problem. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. I'm going to put some descriptions below, uh, some links below in the description to most of the stuff we talked about today so you can kind of explore it on your own. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.